are, are you asking the wrong question about your money? Plus, we're going to talk about the 401k rollover mistake that is literally costing retirees and workers billions of dollars. So hope your week is going well, and hopefully you're not one of those folks that's going to find out that you're costing yourself some money at the end of this program. Certainly good stuff and a range of topics to cover on this week's episode of Dollars and Cents, where we help you make sense out of all of life's decisions involving your dollars. One of Central Florida's longest running radio programs coming to you on a host of stations throughout the Central Florida region. Also a top 25 financial planning podcast in its own right. My name is Joel Garris, certified financial planner, certified financial fiduciary at Nelson Financial Planning. Joining me this week, I have the pleasure of Zach Keister's company. He is also a certified financial fiduciary at Nelson Financial Planning. Good morning. How Good are you? morning. Yeah, happy to be here. Survive show number one. So here we are. Show number two. Correct. Yes, that is very true. You survived it and you are back for more. Back for so more. that's good. Uh, the uh, inaugural show for you is probably, what was it, six, eight weeks ago, yeah. I think, or something mm-hmm. like that? Yeah, a couple weeks ago, yeah. So uh, the pattern, if you missed it, uh, based on your original show, for our listening audience, the pattern at Nelson Financial Planning is after you've been with us for a few years, showed that you know what you're doing, uh, then you can ultimately uh, shift up into that certified financial fiduciary role. Uh, of course, you've got to study and pass the test sure, first. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the reality is you, you can get that credential and then get the opportunity to uh, Join us here on the radio program. Absolutely. Graduate to the radio program if you if you would like there to call it go. that. We like to think that. This is a <laughs> this is a promotion, not a D motion as well. Uh, so speaking of milestones, obviously this year for Nelson Financial Planning was our fortieth anniversary. We started the year out strong with a nice feature in the Orlando Business Journal. Most recently named one of the best places to work thanks to the folks at the orlando business journal and i guess zach the reality is what makes us a great place to work is uh, we got a great team of folks just like you that are uh make it pleasurable every day yeah we've got a great great team here um, a lot of communication a lot of uh, folks that are friendly happy to help out and that was one piece coming up you know i really leaned on a lot of folks in this office that have a lot more experience and just nothing but helpful Yeah, Yeah, that's great. Well, and I think at the end of the day, what I've always said, and I'll clean it up for our airways, we just need to make sure that when we're coming in every day, we care and we want to give that extra effort on behalf of all of our clients. And I think everybody really does follow that kind of concept, and um, it uh, makes it a great place to work. That's for sure. Yeah, Yeah, good stuff indeed. But beyond our 40th anniversary, there's another big anniversary that just happened recently. So, Zach, why don't you tell us what that is? Just happened. A couple, uh, two weeks ago, the 100-year anniversary of the mutual fund. The MFS Mass Investors Trust was the first mutual fund. came out July 15th. 1924 and mind you a annual lifetime return of 9.39 percent yeah that's that's kind of interesting when you think about the mutual funds and and uh and how they how long they have been a hundred years that really is just amazing it all started with yes that particular fund massachusetts investors trust managed by the folks at uh, massachusetts financial services up in uh, boston it's a fund uh that i have owned personally for probably 25 plus years uh and certainly one that we still use a lot of with our clients uh, if you're a regular listener to the program or you're a client of Nelson Financial Planning, you know, of course, that we don't recommend anything to you to do with your money that we haven't already done with our own. So that would make sense if we're 
recommending that particular fund to our clients, then at the end of the day, uh, certainly we want to make sure that we own it on a personal basis. But certainly, uh, obviously, past performance, no guarantee, sure. those kinds of things. But a 100-year track record that's over 9%, that uh, really does, uh, is, is a testament to, to the markets. It's a testament to mutual funds and how they work uh, and this great country of ours as well. Yeah, absolutely. And it goes to show that they have really stood the test of time, if you will. You know, anything that's been around for 100 years, you got to be doing something Correct. because, you know, those those tend to fade really quickly. Navigating, you know, recessions and other disruptions and wars and that kind of stuff and really played a pivotal role to the individual investor over the years as well. And just to provide a couple of stats on that, Americans owned 33.6% trillion mm. with a T in fund assets. That's 71 million households, majority sure. of America sure. that, you know, that are investing 116 million Americans are participating in the financial markets. You know, it, it, and that is sort of the design of the mutual fund and, and, and how it works. It's designed to be effectively sort of a pooled in, in investment for that fund that just celebrated its 100-year anniversary here a couple of weeks ago. Today, that fund has over $7 billion of assets. If you go to Boston, uh, and uh, so when I go and, and, and visit with the portfolio managers of this particular fund company, if you go into the lobby, you actually see the original stock ledger book oh, that's neat. for uh, Massachusetts uh, Investors Trust, which uh, which is the fund that started off the entire fund industry that, as you said, now uh, Americans have over $33 trillion. Globally, there's $70 trillion in mutual funds. So tremendous amount of money in these vehicles. And what's interesting, Zach, about that stock ledger book, the original stock ledger book from that first when that fund first started a hundred years ago is um you can kind of see what it what it owned it, it owned mm -hmm. some sure. as you might well expect in 1924 railroads railroads yep. utilities there you go sure. that kind of thing and i i guess that's one of the the features of kind of how funds can can work uh, this particular fund, obviously an active fund, so clearly it doesn't own the same railroads and utilities that it did back then. Uh, it owns companies like Microsoft and Google and Chase and Visa and things like that. But, you know, it, it really does underscore the, the value, to your mm -hmm. point and those stats about how broad the use of mutual funds is. It really does allow for that small investor to be able to have a, a fully diversified portfolio. I mean, that particular fund, like we said, has over $7 billion of assets. It typically owns 60 to 70 different companies. So with, with 100 bucks, you can own a fully diversified portfolio. Sure. Yeah. And then, and at that, an actively managed Correct. portfolio that, you know, has the potential to change around, just like we were talking about, you know, the times of the railroads and the utilities and stuff like that. And then the, the comparison to today where it's Google and Microsoft and, and yeah. Apple and that sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, I don't think 100 years ago they would have conceived the notion of, 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 of google that is that is for uh for sure uh in contrast you know hundred dollars you buy you invest that in a fund uh you get a fully diversified portfolio there's no way you could recreate the mm -hmm. diversity mm -hmm. of that portfolio if you were to go out and buy individual stocks um and so that's certainly you know the the, the prevalence so so we certainly wanted to take a moment and talk a little bit about that other big anniversary but, Zach, you've also got some stats on, on the impact that funds play just, just in the financial market. Yeah, so we'll give a couple of those stats. Uh, funds own 33% of all U.S. stocks, 22% yeah. of all corporate bonds, and 27% of municipal bonds. So, major player. Yeah, no question at all. And you know what? You know, as with anything, for popularity to continue and particularly to... So are you asking the wrong question about your money? Here's the reality. Any question that starts with the three words, should I buy, it is simply going to turn into a, a, a sales pitch where you're, you're getting told nothing more than what you want to hear rather than perhaps what you need to hear. Don't you think that's the case, Zach? That is, yeah, that is absolutely the case. And we do get that question a lot. Mm -hmm. Should I buy, insert something, gold, 
crypto, you know, the, the latest hot stock pick, what have you. And that really, you know, that's one of a three part question. That's and that's the end question of the three, if you will, also, because you're missing the other two. You, and, and, and that is very true. And, and so, but far too often, that's how people start the conversation. So in this segment here on dollars and cents, we're going to talk about what those other questions are that you should be asking before you ever get to the should I buy question. So welcome on into the program. This, of course, is dollars and cents, where we help you make sense out of all of life's decisions involving your dollars, including ultimately should I buy something? But there's a host of other questions that you probably want to answer first before you get to that point. We're one of Central Florida's longest running radio programs coming to you on a host of radio stations throughout the Central Florida region. Also a top 25 financial planning podcast as well. So make sure you check us out on your favorite podcast platform or our YouTube channel. Any trouble finding us on any of those platforms, feel free to go to our website at nelsonfinancialplanning.com where you can find the icons, click on them, they'll connect you directly to the channel on that particular platform. While you're there, if you're interested in making an absolutely free, no obligation consultation with us to maybe help you find out what the questions are that you need to be asking about your finances, well, just fill out the contact us form and we'll be happy to sit down and have a conversation with you. My name, of course, is Joel Garris, Certified Financial Planner, Certified Financial Fiduciary at Nelson Financial Planning, where we got a team of folks, all of whom are certified financial fiduciaries, much like the guy sitting to my left, Zach Keister, that stand ready, willing, and more than able to help Help you improve your life with a successful and cost-effective financial plan. So, so the the should I buy question, Zach? That that really is like a what question, and and, and the reality is there, there's some why questions and some who questions that you kind of need 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 to answer before you even get to the should I buy question. Yeah, absolutely. The that just seems to be like the last question you should be asking. Yeah. I mean, first of all, if you want to go back to step one, you back to the why. What's the goal? Sure. What's the purpose? Are you trying to leave a legacy? Are you trying to just retire and be comfortable? You know, that's step one is why am I doing this? What's my goal? Right. No, that's no question at all. Because, and look, I mean, we, we get it, right? I yeah. mean, the, the, the reality is that uh, you see so many advertisements every Just, day. I mean, well, you watch one Super Bowl. Right. And then. Well, correct. Yes. And, and if you've been watched the Super Bowl two years ago, it was all those crypto <laughs> ads of all those guys that are now getting sued because they were promoting what you should buy and not getting to the to the real question. But certainly we get it because it is so pervasive out there. Um, and, and that really is the, 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 the focus about uh, most of those questions that, that, that get asked these days. Yeah. And it's just in your face constantly as yeah. well. Just ads for all of these different investments. And they typically, unfortunately, kind of skew um, kind of an action needed. Sure. If you will act now, this right. is, you know, limited time offer, you know, so that tends to kind of skew folks into thinking, am I missing something out? And, you know, the, the fear of missing out is definitely real when it comes to a lot of these different products. Well, it, it, correct. And it's new, this new that. And, and unfortunately, probably the worst purveyor of that is the financial services industry mm -hmm. in and of itself, mm -hmm. because, and I've long shared this with, with, with folks that listen to the radio program here on a regular basis. But the, 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 the industry is very good at rolling out products right when that interest in buying them is very high. The problem is they certainly don't have established track records like uh, the 100 year hundred history year. That, that the mutual fund industry has. And uh, they, they often will, will just lead to sort of a, a, a scattergram of different investments that you have inside your portfolio that really aren't uh, working particularly well together. I guess at the end of the day, Zach, th there's, there's not enough, I guess, planning or mm -hmm. deliberation out there in terms of what needs to be done. Sure. It's, it's like going and picking the rail car before you put the track on for the rail car to go on. 
It's just I, I want this brand new rail car, and I've got it. Um, well, I don't know where I'm quite going with it because I don't necessarily have any track, but that's kind of the thought process, if you, if you will. Yeah, just tons of products spewing out every which way again with the advertisements and that sort of stuff, but not much planning right. involved with that. It's just here's our new product, um, not so much on wh how it's going to involve you and how it's going to navigate within your life. Well, and of course, by the time everybody is is talking about or by the time, by the time it's getting that, that heightened level of advertising, mm -hmm. Uh, chances are the the, the, the ship is already sailed. Absolutely, performance I, is already. Happening. I have not been here for that long, but I've been here long enough to know that that is certainly the case with most things. Correct. It's just you know by the time that it makes the mainstream media and folks are pumping it up and saying you need to own this, it's probably a little too late. It, that would be with there's there's history and history upon history for for that. So so let, let's talk about you know kind of what a little bit more about kind of what. The, the, the focus really should should be and, and I guess it starts with you know look wh why do, why are we saving money in the first place why do we have investments in the first place and I think once we start to think about that then we start to get to the questions that we should be asking ourselves yeah and then be able to paint kind of a roadmap of like you said why do I own this why do I want to own this what's my legacy or am I just trying to retire or what have you and then once you get that step down, then come a little bit further into some more why questions. And then finally, at the very end, end up at the what should I own? What's going to what's going to work to make me accomplish my goals? So so to get a little bit more specific, let's say you're approaching retirement. OK, the conversation comes up in terms of need for income. Right. So mm -hmm. so how much income do you need? Uh, what's it going to take to kind of cover those those normal expenses? That's where we that's where we really kind of get into that whole budgeting conversation and kind of what that what that picture looks like. Yeah, absolutely. So once you have then made your establishment of here's what I'm trying to do, here's where I'm trying to get at, make the plan. That's the critical step too that often gets missed and that's highly invaluable. You've got to have the plan itself. So now you've got, here's what I want to do. And then you go to step two of here's where I want to go and here's how I'm going to get there. And then you arrive at the, what should I own? What do I need to own to, you know, be able to accomplish my goals in retirement? Well, and I think Zach, that really does get us sort of to the key takeaway in this particular segment of the program. And, and, and that is, look, there, there is a difference between being product oriented in the questions that you ask and being goal oriented in terms of creating a financial plan. And you really have to be much more on the goal oriented side of things in order to have a successful plan that's going to kind of weather whatever the headlines might uh, might be that come our way over the next decades. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's way more important to look at the aspects of where am I going? What am I trying to do? You know, those variable things, those variable finds, find the variables find the plan, construct the plan. And as we would mention, you know, have a chat with a fiduciary about that, about that plan, about your goals, where you're trying to go. And then like we've been saying, arrive at what you want to own last. Fair second key, take, key takeaway, Zach, that you just mentioned there. Make sure you're taking the time to really talk to somebody. That's certainly key. Um, and, and to give yourself the opportunity to really help to answer those more goal-oriented questions. That's certainly how every new client conversation in our office starts with really a conversation. It's not about how, what do you have, what do you own, what's this, what's that. It's really more a, a, a conversation about what are we trying to accomplish here, and then that that leads to some of the que other questions that you should be asking. But at bottom line, it starts with being goal oriented on those questions, not product oriented. We're going to take a break and return here on Dollars and Cents with Joel Garrison, Zach Keister of Nelson Financial Planning. There is a 401k rollover mistake that is literally costing retirees billions of Dollars, Zach. Tell us about this this research out of the folks at, at, at Vanguard that that really looks at this issue, 
and uh, how costly it is to investors. Yeah, absolutely. This is a dire mistake when it when it comes to investing uh, for your retirement. Like you mentioned, this is a survey out of Vanguard estimating that more than a hundred and seventy two billion mm. with a B is lost every year in retirement wealth. That is unbelievable. I mean, and when you think of that, that's just a crazy, crazy number. So uh, on this segment, we're going to talk to you about what that mistake is, what people are doing that they need to fix, uh, and more importantly, how to avoid it. So you won't be part of that statistic that the folks at Vanguard researched and came up with that just huge number of lost and missed opportunity in terms of being able to grow wealth. So welcome on into the program. This, of course, is Dollars and Cents, where we help you make sense out of all of life's decisions involving your dollars. One of Central Florida's longest running radio programs, also a top 25 financial planning podcast. Be sure to check out and learn more about our organization at nelsonfinancialplanning.com. My name is Joel Garris. With me this week is Zach Keister. Both of us are certified financial fiduciaries at Nelson Financial Planning, where we got a great team of folks who will help you improve your life with a successful and cost-effective financial plan. So he, the real issue uh, that, that this, this Vanguard study uncovered, based on their research, is that workers are missing out on, on billions every year in investment gains but by, by pulling retirement savings sort of out of the stock market after switching jobs, often without meaning to, really kind of getting tripped up with, with, these, with these rollovers from an old company to, you know, from a prior employer into an IRA, the money, and this is the key piece, the, the, the money is, is frequently held as cash until new investments are selected. And unfortunately, many don't. And that's part of the big problem on this. Yeah, that's that's the major issue. They never seem to. A lot of times folks don't necessarily make it back in. They go to the cash and they never make in. So just a little bit more stats on that. A third of folks who rolled over savings into an IRA, this is the Vanguard study, um, were in cash after seven years. Yeah. Seven years later, Absolutely. after moving, say they move em, uh, employers, get a new job, seven years later. Did the 401k, did that process, moved it over, um, and and so, uh, so, so, so Vanguard's research looked at the year 2015, still found seven years later, a third of those people that had done those 401k rollovers to an IRA were still sitting in that default cash mm-hmm. option. Unbelievable. Yeah, seven seven years. Just to imagine that, seven years of missed opportunity yeah. Yeah. in the market. If you're that. making 9%, you're mm-hmm. pretty close to almost doubling that mm-hmm. money. And, and again, that's where the Vanguard came up with the number. I mean, it's a huge cost, 170 billion. 72 billion per year that investors are missing out. And that doesn't just extend to 401k rollovers. The research looked at contributions as well. Yes, absolutely. And then another little piece here. In just 2022, folks that had contributed to their IRAs Half of them stayed in cash at least two months. Yeah, yeah, well, twelve months over a year period. Twelve months, yes, right. So, so uh, it it doesn't just apply on four hundred one k rollovers. Obviously, this segment we're focusing a little bit on that. It it also applies on just contributions that people make, and again, that default option is the option. Um, that 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 kind of just goes into cash, and, and and you know, Zach, you've helped a ton of clients do rollovers and things like that of their 401k. And I mean, it is a process. It is a process. It can get cumbersome. You know, a lot of times there's individual paperwork for a sure. specific company that they work for. You know, it does take some effort. Right. It definitely takes some effort. And I can understand, you know, the average person, that's absolutely daunting. Right. Absolutely daunting sure. to try and tackle that 
without professional help on their own. Think about it. I mean, you already have so much going on. You've just changed jobs. And now you're trying to figure out how do I get my old retirement plan into something new? You really got to reach out to somebody because, you know, this is very prevalent. Obviously, we can see by the numbers. Yeah, and you can see that, you know, the process, as you just described, Zach, I mean, it's, it's, usually, uh, it's usually a phone call or it could be paperwork. And the paperwork is usually 15 pages long. Or maybe it's even a combination. In some cases, it's a combination. A lot of times it's a combination, yeah. A lot of times they need the paperwork and a phone call and then some more paperwork after so. And and so it is understandable where this issue could be happening because once you get through all of that, right, and let's say you've navigated that successfully, do you really then have the capacity or the bandwidth to then pick from, you know, the thousands of thousands. different investment yeah. options that are out there? And that's where uh, people are failing to do that uh, that that second step. Yeah, I would like to see the stat on how many folks go through that process, do the paperwork, do the rollover, it arrives at the new company, and they still have the same problem even after so. Yeah. After so of just sitting in cash by, you know, just looking at the daunting, as you mentioned, thousands of investment options out there. Sure. You just think, boy, I just did all this work to get this over here. Now i got to pick where it's going to go. No, and, 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 and part of the issue is that, you know, I think a lot of people, particularly younger workers, you know, in your 401ks these days, they, they have with the auto enrollment stuff that they do. It also sort of places you into a, an investment that is commiserate sort of with your with with your age. So that's, you know, the whole use of target date mm -hmm. funds. But oftentimes, you know, your, your, your choice is sort of auto into a target date fund. IRAs don't kind of have that auto feature. So, cool. so that's one of the biggest issues there. Co correct. And then just to give a, one other little stat there, speaking of the IRA, the IRA is more dominant at that as well. IRAs at $14.3 trillion compared to the 401ks at $11.1 trillion. So even more so, you know, the, the ball rolling down the hill, right. it's, you know, the majority of folks that are within the IRAs have that issue. Certainly talking about the, uh, the majority of retiree or employee wealth uh, that's ultimately designed to generate out money on a uh, on a monthly basis to them and and so we we just continue to see that where in the absence of the auto enrollment and the other issue of course and we've talked about this in, in prior shows so oftentimes when you roll it over you say oh well maybe cash these days it's not too bad it's you know maybe paying close to five percent but but that's certainly not the case when you do a rollover because typically that money just winds up in in a sweep account in a sweep true cash account yeah right, right which doesn't really pay any Anything. interest at all so clearly um just some huge missed opportunities uh on uh exactly and we've had and we've had situations where Folks have come into the office and said, how come I'm not making any money on, on this account that I've had, uh, you know, for a while? There's nothing happening here. Yeah, and then a lot of times we sit down, you know, we go through, like we mentioned in our last segment, our first thing, sit down, just kind of get to know, chat a little bit. Eventually we make it to, what do you currently own? Right. And how many times have we seen this discussion of, I haven't really been making any money in this account. Could you tell me what's going on? Do I have bad funds? What's going on? And then we look at what they own and they're in cash. No, it's a, it's a real issue. And that's, that's why obviously we, we offer free consultations, free portfolio reviews, things like that at Nelson Financial Planning. Also a great way to get your free copy of our book, Next Gen Dollars and Cents as well. So, you know, to get to the kind of the key takeaway in this segment, Zach, you know, look, I think some of this, and, and I don't want to stick on step, step on a lot of toes, uh, and I might. So before I step on toes, I'm going to have us take a break, <laughs> and then we'll come back and uh, apologize in ahead for stepping on some toes. But I'm going to have a couple of couple of observations, couple of takeaways on this issue and this research uh, from Vanguard, looking at the accounts that they have and calculating just how much is lost by ultimately just leaving a rollover in cash when you go through that process of rolling over that 401k over to an IRA. So we'll continue here on Dollars and Cents with Joel Garrison, Zach Easter of Nelson Financial Planning.
So we're talking about the results of this recent study by the folks at Vanguard that, that concluded that there is a major mistake that people are making when they're rolling over their 401ks from their old employers into IRAs. And the funny thing, Zach, is it's not that they're messing up on the paperwork and creating tax consequence, although that is a real issue. It's, it's what they're doing once that process is, is done, or at least once they think the process is done is at the end of the day they're just leaving the money sitting in in cash and and not getting to step two of trying to figure out how they should be investing that money yeah absolutely and that's that really unfortunate Joel, is the reality is they're going through a lot of these steps like we mentioned doing the paperwork meeting with folks getting the rollover to happen over to the ira just at the end of the day, be sitting in pure cash, not invested, not even invested in good cash, not even invested in money markets. Uh, yeah, correct, because you're more than likely you're well on that transfer it went to a sweep, sweep account, and and that's not a money market account. That's just you know sort of a straight bank account that's making zero point two percent, so or or zero point zero two percent in in some cases uh, based on what we've seen in the office, and, and those statistics, uh, you know, where where they looked at. You know, one so, so it's one third of the folks that did rollovers back in 2015 are still sitting in cash seven, seven years, years later. That that's just such a missed opportunity. Seven years wonderful. of yeah, no growth when yeah. you know, like you mentioned earlier, you know, average of nine percent. Seven years missed out on that. So before the break, we mentioned that we might step on a little bit of toes because I know there's a lot of our listeners who, who like their Vanguard, um, but. The reality is, as I as I kind of looked at this st- survey, read this survey, and, and thought a little bit more about it, 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 it's a little bit of an indictment on that do-it-yourself, that that vanguard approach, because at, at some point, shouldn't there be something that helps investors ultimately answer that final question? And and that really is the shortcoming on. Um, kind of the do-it-yourself approach, uh, particularly when we think about a company like Vanguard. Not to, you know, not not to just poke at them, but at the end of the day, um, you know, th- they've always been a, a, been a very much a do-it-yourself. But what's interesting about some of this research that they're that they're doing is you're actually seeing a little bit of a business shift where they're starting to get a little bit more into kind of the advisory business and things like that and 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 that's fine but but again anytime you do that there's you know there's there's always a cost to that but maybe sometimes that cost is worth it yeah sometimes it is you know that goes to that old saying no such thing as a free lunch so you're not going to pick up the advice necessarily for free so that is one large i would say stumble to get over with those kinds of things the do it yourself type accounts you are quite literally doing it yourself so you've got to have some you know knowledge research that sort of stuff to be able to pull that kind of thing off and you know our suggestion on that is if you don't feel comfortable going down that road give us a call well, and, and, and give us a call, but as we've always said on the program, you know, make, make sure you go and interview. There's a lot of people in the industry. Everybody's connection to uh, whoever is giving you advice is going to be different. So we always encourage you to shop that around as well. But, but yeah, you know, it, the more I thought about this, the, the more I was like, oh, that's kind of an indictment of kind of the process at Vanguard where you're not actually helping people get to that final step. But clearly by their own research, a th- third of the people are certainly missing out. Um, and, and if you're going to use somebody to help, uh, then make sure you really do ask those questions about costs. Because as we see, Zach, in the office, adv- advisory costs mm-hmm. are all over the map mm-hmm. in terms of what those costs are and what uh, what clients wind up paying, that's for sure. Yeah, that's one thing in our position that we've been able to see over time, looking at different, uh, different portfolios, different companies, Vanguard, Schwab, what have you and just seeing the kind of mix if you will where some folks are under an advisory fee some folks are pure diy 100 percent doing it on their own some folks have mutual funds so it's very interesting to see you know every gathering is a little bit different and what the mixture is is always a little bit different as well so it's always interesting to kind of dissect that and see okay what 
level are you under, if you will? Well, and I think that gets back to kind of, you know, our, our topics today on the program. You know, at the end, they, they certainly do relate to each other, right? Mm -hmm. And it comes back to stuff we've always talked about on this program, which is make sure you're asking the right questions about your money. And, and, and at the end of the day, make sure your money is invested where it needs to be, particularly if you're doing a rollover. Uh, particularly. And then also a, another little piece that we say all the time, know what you own. Right. This That connects in with this as well. Know what you own. This all kind of, like you mentioned, goes together. This is back to the uh, the rail car before the, the uh, train tracks Again, knowing what you own, knowing what kind of funds you have, you know, what your goals are, where you're trying to get. And again, like we mentioned a couple of seconds ago, segments ago, being goal oriented, not product oriented. No, that's exactly right. And to a certain extent also ties into trying to use some professionals who is a fiduciary to sort of help with both in terms of trying to figure out um, all, all of these different components. So, so Zach, we started the, the show with talking about the 40th, our 40th anniversary as a firm. Uh, with the other big anniversary this year is the mutual fund itself turning 100, uh, really sort of withstood the, the, the test of, of, of time, uh, that is for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And again, you know, to have something last 100 years and still still be chugging along, you know, principles must be there. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. And it's so important that it certainly has adjusted with the times as well, particularly the internal costs. Um, and, and uh, you know, the more I think about, you know, kind of these, the, the conversation we've had today about the notion of, of, of really getting to those goal-oriented questions, I think, I think there's a couple of things or, or, or three key pieces on on that in that conversation. And, and by the way, we, we, we do talk about this um, in chapter three of our book, Next Gen Dollars and Cents. That's all about financial goals. And, um, you know, I think it breaks down into three parts where you, you need to think about what, what the type of goals are. That, that you want? Are they short term? Are they long term? Are you going to leave a legacy? Are you going to want income? And, and then you sort of need to then shift to, okay, identifying the goals that you actually want to achieve. And then lastly, you got to have a plan of action because mm -hmm. otherwise it's just worth You're not going to go anywhere without correct. a plan of action. That is correct. That is, and that's sort of our process um, and, and certainly an important part of it, which is why we spent that third chapter in the book really kind of talking about goals and the things that you need to be asking. Yeah, absolutely. And just those three things, the types of goals that you want, what you want to achieve, and then obviously your plan of action. Like we mentioned, you can't get anywhere with a plan of action. So going back again, you know, really sit down and really spend some time and think, where am I trying to go with this? Where do I want to get to? Check that off the list. And then you move on to what do I need? What kind of team do I need around me to get to said area? And then you get to the third step, create the plan. Because again, you know, you need the plan to get there to begin with. Eventually, you got to get to the what question. You got to get to the what <laughs> question. And then I would exactly add a, right. a fourth. I would add a fourth. That's eventually when you get to the spot of what should I own? See, you know, that question that we mentioned about, a lot of folks are asking first and as you can see, as we've laid out, that's the really should be the last question you should be asking yourself. No, that's exactly right. And so important that if you're going to do something yourself in that form of that 401k rollover, you've really got to understand that there are more steps than you realize and ultimately have got to get to that question of what investments. At the end of the day, you got to you got to get to that question, but there's a host of questions that you need to ask ahead of time. So with that, we're going to kind of wrap it on up. Uh, we appreciate all of the folks that listened in today to today's program. If you have any questions uh, about anything we talked about today, feel free to give us a call at the office, uh, the office number 407-629-6477, or you can visit our website, Nelson Financial Planning, 24 hours a day. Reach out to us on on the website. Remember, we don't charge for conversations uh, and we don't have account minimum. So a couple of things that make us somewhat unique in the business. Uh, that means that uh, we're truly here 
to help. With that, we're going to wrap it on up and get on out of here. This has been Joel Garrison, Zach Keister of Nelson Financial Planning on Dollars and Cents.